Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Faith Church. I'm Pastor Jess, and on behalf of the entire congregation, we welcome you into worship this morning to come and experience the love of God, to come and find renewal for your soul, can come and find forgiveness of sins and joy joy here with those who are gathered. Look around. This is the body of Christ and we are not alone for each one of us are encouraging each other on this journey. Together we worship. Before we move into worship, we have quite a few announcements this morning. So pause for a moment. Um, many of these things have been in faith works, but I'm going to reiterate them here again today and then I'll make sure it's in faith works weekly again next week. Uh, thank you to Jason, who is our Zoom deacon this morning. We thank you so much, Jason, for this very meaningful ministry of service you have this morning. Jason, you can put up that first slide of our welcome. If you are new here um, or we don't have your name in our database, I invite you to put your smartphone up to that QR code and it will take you right to our welcome page. Um, it's our virtual sign-in book so we know who you are how we can keep in contact with you. It's been wonderful for me to just send a quick email to those who have been um, new in our church uh, while we are worshiping online. So that's really helpful for all of us. We just wanna be in contact with you and keep you in our prayers and know how we can be of spiritual support to you. Next slide, please. If you have, this is the last week, I'll make an announcement on this, but uh, we have, the consistory and I have been very busy over the last year plus. This is our brand new logo. We're really excited about this. Uh, this is our brand new website, faithinstatecollege.org. Dr. Stephanie Madden, who is a PR uh, public relations communications professor at Penn State is helping us get some swag, some bumper stickers and some stickers and buttons. So that will be coming because we want to be proud of our church and be able to share who we are in the new image. Um, and you'll see the sacred windows uh, as, of course, highlighted um, because I know many of us miss that right now. So check out faithinstatecollege.org. Uh, it's a vibrant new website full of the reverence and the joy and the welcome of who we are as a church. Next slide, please. Okay, folks, I've been looking forward to hugging you. I've been able to hug some of you this week. I saw June and Jackie and Sandy and Carlton for the first time in person in, in 15 long months. So if you are able and you would like to come and celebrate together, we are having a Pentecost Pride Month potluck and party in the park. Uh, next Sunday, June 6th, 4 to 7 p.m. at Tudic Park in the large pavilion. If you need help with that, just email the office and we can get you there. I know we're having some shared rides as well. We will have some balloons, uh, music, sidewalk chalk for your kids. The committee, who is uh, April and Dave Cassidy and Elizabeth, we all thought that um, we might not be ready totally for a potluck. Everybody's uh, level is at a little different comfort level. So I'm encouraging you, bring your own food, make sure there's enough food for, for you to eat. But if you feel comfortable uh, in sharing food, and if somebody else feels comfortable in sharing with you, you can do that too. Um, but we know everybody's comfort level right now with health and safety is just a little different. The whole purpose of next week is just to gather in outdoors in person and be gentle with each other as we begin to reunite and begin to see one another. Something I've been doing, and I wanna offer this to you. This is what I do when I'm out. I know these are new social cues, but this might be helpful for you. I often say I'm fully vaccinated and I'm comfortable not wearing a mask and I would be happy to offer you a hug, but I defer to the most conservative approach. And I just name it out there um, if someone else is not comfortable with a hug or they would prefer a mask, I wear a mask. Um, we want to respect each other's boundaries and begin to reunite with loving, tender care. But you better believe me, for those who are ready for hugs next week, I can't wait to hug you. Just come. And if you don't want to hug, I will respect your boundaries as well. 
4 to 7 at Tudic Park next week. We look forward to celebrating together. Uh, you can take that slide down now, Jason. Thank you. A couple other announcements. Uh, this is, as every year, um, Marinda's contract ends the last Sunday of May, and we go into a summer hiatus. So, Marinda, we thank you so, so deeply for your ministry of online. I know it has taken a lot from you and Mark, which is why I gave you two last Sunday off to just relax and heal. Marinda, we are incredibly grateful for you. Um, we hope your summer hiatus is wonderful. We look forward to seeing you in the fall. But can we offer the heart emojis and handshakes and just thank Marinda so much for her ministry. We love you, Marinda. Very, very much. Also, Rachel's contract is ending the, today as well. And uh, before we go into summer hiatus, which means children, I will be with you right after the service today. And children, next Sunday, we'll be gathering and uh, one more time before our summer hiatus. And I'll be leading us next Sunday as we offer a blessing to Rachel and their ministry. Um, Rachel, I've said this to you personally, but uh, you, uh, this was hard, hard year for me in so many different reasons, and you, you helped so tremendously, um, and I'm so grateful for you. Lucky for us, uh, Rachel is a member at Faith Church. Rachel will be coming as a member in discernment, and we will support them um, in their ordination process when that time comes. So let us thank Rachel for their ministry, too, and love, blessings. We thank you. Um, Rachel, do you want to share about the children's time today and drop the link in there, please? Of course, as I'm like already misty eyed is the true Enneagram for that I am. <laughs> um, yeah, I just all the love back to you, to each of you. I'm so happy to be a part of this congregation and I love each of you and I cannot wait to meet you in person as we continue this relationship together. So I just wanna say the feeling is mutual, deeply mutual. Uh, so today we're gonna to actually, we're gonna read a book that I was gifted. And I'm very excited to read this book to all of you. So this book is very beautiful, beautiful illustrations. It's called The Boy, The Mule, The Fox, and The Horse. Because we're gonna kind of have a story time together today. This book talks a lot about how to be brave and how to be courageous and how to ask for help when we need to. So we're gonna read this together and Pastor Jess will be with us and we're just gonna have a cozy, comfortable story time. So I'll drop the link in the chat and I can't wait to listen to this book with all of you. Thank you, Rachel. And just so you know, uh, Rachel, we'll, we will celebrate their year. Um, and I wanna thank the consistory too for being creative with this idea, I gave them. I said, "Hey, let's hire somebody in Georgia." That was new. <laughs> that was new for us this year, and the consistory, we did it. We did, and and um, Rachel was able to serve from Georgia, where they live with their wife, and um, we thank you very much, Rachel. And I know the kids have grown in their faith and have felt loved deeply. We will celebrate Rachel's ministry for this year next Sunday. Um, but I will be going on vacation very soon. Next Sunday, I will be here, but then I will be off the rest of June. Uh, and so you'll see Rachel again. Uh, they will be preaching for me uh, while I am away. And I will be back the first Sunday in, in July. This, uh, oh, in June. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, June Irvin wanted me to let you know that, and for some of you, you may know this couple, they're long-term members at Faith Church, Clint and Marsha Hegeman. Clint turned 100, 100 years young. Wow. Lord, thanks be to God. And Marsha will be turning 100 by the end of the year. So that's another cause for celebration. We give thanks and we, um, we bless you, Clint and Marsha. Uh, and thank you, June, for staying connected to our body of Christ. And as I mentioned, uh, I will be here next Sunday, but June 9th to the end of the month, I will be away. You'll be in good hands uh, as we continue to worship. This Tuesday, the consistory will gather 
Uh, and at that time, um, Sue, do you want to say anything about that consists for me? I'm putting you on the spot, but I don't know if you want to say anything. Yeah, yeah. So this is what I do. Sue, jump in. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, so we're going to uh, consistory at our meeting. We're going to be focusing 100% uh, on uh, when we return to, to the sanctuary. So that will be our, our primary focus. We have a checklist of a lot of items to discern and talk about and make sure that we're ready. Um, you know, as a congregation to consider all different uh, aspects. So our, our goal is think we, not me. Um, and so that's, um, that's kind of the, the approach that we're gonna take when we, when we have that meeting on Tuesday evening. And under, thank you so much, Sue, for serving as president and to each consistory member. I, I want you to know each of these consistory members um, uh, and, and, and we need to thank them and pray for them as well. The motto for the United Church of Christ is from John chapter 17, that they may be one as the Father and I are one. And I want you to keep that in your heart and your mind as we move forward. Uh, each of us, as I say, are at different places in our own comfort. And, and what we must do from our gospel is consistently look to those who are vulnerable and can, those who are in need and think of the we not just the me and what we're ready to do, but think of the we, how do we care for each other as the body of Christ? So keep John 17 at the focus of your heart and your mind as we, as the body of Christ move forward together. So thank you to the consistory. Oh, I think that's all the announcements today. That was a lot. Let us begin our worship. I invite you to take a deep breath. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we can do that by lighting our candle as we do every Sunday. If you have a candle, I invite you to take that out now and light it. If you don't, no worries. There is enough light. There is enough love here in, in this midst. We light this candle to symbolize that Christ is the light of the world. We light this candle to say that Christ is present in each of our homes and our rooms and couches and tables that Christ is the one that leads this church and Christ is the head of this church. So we follow you, O oh Christ, light of the world. Let us call each other into worship, the call to worship on our screen. As always, I invite you to unmute yourself and read the bolded words while I read the unbolded words. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God. Whose voice, voice moves in every, every direction, every every is God's, God's holy, holy splendor. When we cry out to God, <coughs> it is the Spirit within us, us that reminds us we are children of God. Prepare us, gentle Spirit. Surround, Surround us. us. Comfort us, us. Remind, remind us of God's, God's, God's peace, peace and love, and love, and love is with, with us. us. We are children of God gathered. May, May we, we praise, praise the sound and truth, truth make way, and make way for the Spirit. People of God, let us <laughs> confess to one another and to our God, trusting in the mercy and the love of our God that we are held in compassion. In one voice unmuted, let us pray out loud together our prayer of confession. God of love, God of love you, put you put within, within us, us and amongst, and amongst, and amongst us, us the spirit, spirit which prompts, prompts us, us to share. To share. When we yes. have stumbled from our loving our neighbor, our neighbor. When, when we have forgotten to love, love ourselves, ourselves. When, when we, we have argued, argued instead of listen, or when, or when we close the door, the door instead of, instead of offering rest. rest. Forgive us, forgive, forgive us, God, God of what, what we share here and what we know rests in our hearts. Our hearts. Renew, Renew us and lead us. us. In Jesus', in Jesus name, name we pray. We pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to mute yourself now. Hear this assurance of the pardon of our sins. 
Scripture says your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. People of God in Christ, you are forgiven. God calls you to seek you and be partners with you. Be at peace in your heart. Be at peace with others. Be at peace with God who loves you so very much. Take a moment to share in the passing of the peace of Christ with each other here by writing in the chat box, the peace of Christ be with you, by sharing in the peace hands or unmuting yourself saying, peace of God be with you. The peace of Christ be with you all. Peace and also God with, you. God with you. you. Christ be with you. And also with you. I invite you to stay muted as we sing our opening hymn, Enter, Rejoice, Come In. Mark. Rejoice and come in. Enter, rejoice and come in. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice and come in. Open yourself to the song. Open yourself to the song. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice and come in. Open your hearts, everyone. Open your hearts, everyone. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Don't be afraid of some change. Don't be afraid of some change. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. I see some dancing, some dancing with animals. That's that's right. The joy of the Lord is our strength. That's good. <laughs> I invite our dear brother Rick to come and share in the scripture. Rick. Let's listen to the word of God found in the gospel of John chapter three, verses one through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, 
that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Here ends the reading. May God bless our hearing and our living of these words. Thanks be to God. Rick, I wouldn't mind you recording the whole Bible and listening to your voice. <laughs> that was beautiful, Rick. Thank you. To honor the conclusion of Rachel's contract, both with the church and for their seminary credit, Rachel will be preaching this morning. And Rachel, we welcome you. Thank you. I have to concur that if Rick is ever interested in recording, just so we can listen to the scripture, I welcome you to that ministry. It was a beautiful reading. Thank you, Rick. Just to get a posture for the sermon, I'm going to invite us to pray um, and pray in perhaps a different way. Um, pray in just a moment of silence to give us solitude, breath, and moment with the spirit before I preach. Let us pray. Spirit, comfort us, guide us, open our ears, silent our wandering mind that often is too ready to emerge into the week ahead. Offer the word that you desire us to hear. Be with us now as you always are. Amen. Often in our childhood, we have heard the repetition of John 3.16. Perhaps some of you have spent time in Sunday school memorizing this verse as a child. Yet when I sat with this text this week, I kept rereading the word might in verse 17. God did not send his son into the world to condemn us, but in order that we might be saved. Might be saved? I don't know about you, but I feel like this one hint hits a little different than God so loved the world. Might indicates a core responsibility past God to us. But what does that mean? We know to be true that John 3 shares the core identity of our Christian faith. And yet, as you've just heard Rick read so beautifully, the conversation with Nicodemus can kind of leave you with question marks until you get to that familiar verse from your childhood. So naturally, I am gonna walk us through it today. And I want us to start with Nicodemus. Who is this guy? At the time, Israel was Roman occupied and there was a small group of Sadducees and Pharisees that had limited power to rule. Nicodemus was a member of this little group of authority. Nicodemus and Jesus were an unlikely pair to be seen together. Remember, Jesus was actively upending Roman law and order. So Nicodemus goes to visit at night. During his visit, Nicodemus has his world rocked. When Jesus says, I assure you, unless someone is born anew, it's not possible to see God's kingdom. That sends Nicodemus into a tailspin. For him, the Hebrew Bible teaching of the Israelites being gathered together and given a new life has happened already. They were just waiting on the Messiah, a king. What Jesus shares that shakes Nicodemus is that new birth equals salvation, equals healing, and the way to new birth is through Jesus, the spirit, and God. This is the point where Nicodemus' mind explodes, like that emoji that we sometimes send each other when we have our minds rocked. <laughs> and Jesus draws him in with the wind. An invisible movement that no one can see, only feel, only hope for, 
only believe in. The wind blows where it wills, and even the highest teacher of the land does not have to have all the answers to experience God. This teacher of Israel isn't required to understand the things of heaven. In fact, Jesus says you won't because you haven't seen it. Our salvation doesn't become fulfilled because we understand all the mystery of our faith. To be saved is fulfilled when in spite of what we do not know, we still choose to go with the wind. There is a divine mystery to our faith that asks of us the same yes that God gives to us at birth. God says yes to our joy, to our living, and our being with God forever. This mystery does not ask of us to have every ounce of our faith, belief, and understanding of God calculated or mastered. It's quite the contrary. We are to be masters of none. We are to be seekers, observers, listeners, and believers in the wind of which we cannot see that will take us where God calls. Perhaps when, like Nicodemus, we feel that we have the power and authority to have mastered the biblical text or our faith, we might seek the wind. For truly, I see in this text that Jesus is testifying to the latter. Life in the spirit is as if it were the wind of God. We will never fully understand or know where it comes from or goes. As long as we live, we are learning, seeing and experiencing God in new ways. This is good news. We do not have to have all the answers. We simply have to stand in the wind, breathe in and breathe out and believe. To be born anew does not mean a passive waiting for God to save the world. Jesus models for us the wind. Throughout his ministry, Jesus has moments of uncertainty. The moments leading up to Jesus' crucifixion is spent in prayer, unsure of why God would place such a call in Jesus' life. Can you imagine what our world would be like if Christ had not gone with the wind? To believe in Jesus is to be saved. And to be saved is to love one another as Jesus loves us, as God holds us, and as the wind guides us. May we go where the spirit calls us, act as the spirit guides us, and love as Christ asks of all of us, all of our days, with a bold yes to the mystery of our faith and in the beauty of God's love for each of us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rachel. Nicodemus is one of my favorite characters in scripture. That was beautiful. May we be safe to love one another this week. I invite Miranda to come and share in the special music as we contemplate the preaching and the word in our midst. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace. 
joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got love like the ocean. I've got love like the ocean. I've got love like the ocean in my soul. I've got love like the ocean. I've got love like the ocean. I've got love like the ocean in my soul. I've got faith like an anchor. I've got faith like an anchor. I've got faith like an anchor in my soul. I've got faith like an anchor. I've got faith like an anchor. I've got faith like an anchor in my soul. Miranda, I hope you see the love around you. Thank you. What a way to end your contract year. Does that mean in person there will be four of you? I'm just curious, Marinda. <laughs> we love you. Thank you very, very much. People of God, we turn to one another and to our God in prayer. Prayer is where we find our strength, where we offer our most vulnerable secrets of our heart, and where we find the spirit breathing in and breathing out in our midst as Rachel preached. So I invite you to offer your prayers or praises by unmuting yourself and briefly sharing your prayer requests out loud or writing it in the chat box and I'll read that out loud to incorporate that in our congregational prayers. At the end of your sharing, please say, this is my prayer and the congregation will respond, God hear our prayers. What are we praying for this morning, church? This is Jay, and wow, thank you, God, for this church, for these people, for all of you. Wow, thank you, God. I love this church. I love it. <laughs> I'm also asking for um, travel mercies. I'm leaving on Tuesday and heading up to Maine, where I get to be with my kids. This is my prayer. God, hear our prayers. And Jay, you are faithful church as much as everybody here and I'm quite fond of this church too thanks be to God I have another praise I wanted to say happy birthday to my sister Carol in Pittsburgh she's in church today she just I could do like Case did she's just turned 58 but uh, <laughs> happy 85th yesterday and many more. Happy birthday, Carol. Thanks be to God. I want to add a couple prayers as well. I'm giving thanks to God for my mom's beautiful birthday this week as well. Her, what is it, 28, mom? No, <laughs> exactly. Happy birthday, mom. Um, we love you very, very much. And I'm also thinking, God, Jesse and I are celebrating our third anniversary on June 1st. And um, it's a privilege to be married to each other and love each other. So I give thanks to God for that. 
a couple prayers from our chat box. If you have not shared, uh, please feel free. There still is time. I'll read that and then I'll offer a pause. From Kat, a prayer of thanksgiving for awesome moms. I think that's especially you, Jay. And we give thanks for you, Kat, so very much. Can't wait to see you at the picnic next week. From Signe, Georgia Marina, a prayer from my colleague, Stacy, who had a stroke this week and is in ICU. Prayers for her and her family. We indeed are praying with you. And for those who don't know, the New York Times uh, did a thing this week that Manitoba is the highest rate of COVID right now. And, and that's what we hear in the prayers of Georgia, Signe and Marina. They're in lockdown right now. It's, it's, it's um, um, what we're feeling in state college is not what, we're, what they're feeling um, there. So our prayers are with your whole family. From Kirsch, from Kenny Kirsch, I had a successful first dose of my COVID vaccine. <laughs> Thanks be to God. We're so glad to hear that. I pause, any other prayers or thanksgivings? I'd like to share a prayer of thanksgiving um, and continued prayers. Um, I've shared the past couple of weeks that I'm, I've been in a difficult season and I just wanted to give thanks to friends and um, family from here that have reached out and have been praying for me and um, yeah, I wanted to offer some apologies, though I know they're not needed for some that uh, may have reached out to me that I've not been able to respond to. Um, it's just, I've been taking good care of myself and not really been much on email or text or things like that, but know that I've, I've received your messages and that they mean a lot to me. And I, um, I, I just, I'm thankful for all the love and care. Um, and I also just received my first COVID dose, uh, not COVID dose, <laughs> vaccination dose. And um, it was really, um, I had a lot of side effects because of, of having COVID, which I found out people that have had COVID um, are rocked by their first dose. And since I had it so recently, so I've had, just having one, two punches <laughs> back and forth, but I think, you know, God has big plans for me, and um, I'm rolling with all of them, so I, I thank you all for your support, and I'm so happy to be part of this, as Jay said, this awesome, amazing church, so this is my prayer. Thank you to God. Keep taking good care of yourself, each one of you. Keep taking good care of yourself. And I appreciate when you remind me the same. <laughs> From Rachel, prayer of gratitude and celebration of the spirit bringing me to faith, faith church, and joy to be a member of this beautiful church. Thank you for welcoming me into this community. Thank you for allowing us to welcome you. I'll pause any other prayers or thanksgivings you want to share. I have a quick one. Um, this is Brittany. Um, so it was a Thanksgiving last week for graduating law school. Um, and then this week is a prayer of uh, help and desperation for all law students, I guess. Um, we have the bar the last week of J July. So until then, it's like a 10 week long study program that's like averaging 10 days or 10 hours a day, um, including the weekends. And then like we also have a two hour class at school. Monday through Saturday. So like, although it's summer, it's actually the worst time of my entire life. So this is like the break I have built in as church. So I'm super excited for this. So just prayers for all of us to stay motivated and sane during this time. We are glad that you chose to be here this morning, Brittany. We pray that this nourishes you in soul and spirit and stamina. And when you pass the bar exam, you better believe we're going to be celebrating. Future lawyer, we can't wait. There is a couple messages for Rachel and Marinda and, and in the chat box expressing our love. I am so grateful for everybody at Faith Church Consistory and Mark and Marinda and Rachel and um, trustees and every ministry. We, we, 
we give thanks the church for each one of you and for the way God has worked in our lives and continues to lead us. I also want to acknowledge Jean Frank. We pray for you, Sister Jean. We can't wait to see you. And Sally Welsh and Jim for our geographical area of Happy Valley and Center County, for the entire USA, for the world, for victims of gun violence, for all those impacted by COVID-19. God, hear our prayers. Thank you, Jason, so much for serving. I appreciate it. It's Memorial Day weekend. We also remember those whose lives have ended while serving in battle or war. For family members, we honor for a day when peace rules for all of our service men and women and people. We pray for you this weekend. We thank God for you. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we know your mercy is new each day. And each day we need reminders of your love. Fill us with compassion that we see in Christ. We don't aspire to perfection, but we aspire to be better and loving kindness of the care of each other. Remove, remove the burden of shame and restore joy to our souls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For families who know the loss of loved ones who died serving in the military, for an end to violence and war, for the day peace is the rule, for strength in services and caring for our veterans, for the saints who died giving of their life, especially the saints connected to Faith Church, whether in membership or in our families. We remember them. Lord, hear our prayer. For our ministry as a church, for our consistory, for our pastor and staff, for the ministry and witness of the United Church of Christ, guide us in the coming weeks according to your Holy Spirit. May we follow the wind and feel your presence in our breathing in and breathing out, as Rachel so eloquently reminded us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For our children and the coming ending of their school year, for our professors, for our teachers, for the janitors and bus drivers, for caretakers and nurses, for doctors, for everyone who is offering their life of service to make this world better. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. For our hearts, for our stamina, for our witness as individuals and families, for each person gathered here who calls Faith Church their home in some capacity. Bless each one of these squares, for they represent our siblings in Christ. Bless us so that we may be a blessing to others, carrying the burden, lightening the load, bringing joy and beauty, and small and big acts. Help us to be faithful to what you've called us to, trusting in your Holy Spirit to guide us. As we begin to welcome summer, let we help us to find respite. Let summer be summer. As we begin to see each other again, let the reentry be gentle. Let it bring joy to our hearts. Let us be encouraged, for we have come this far by faith. Hear our personal prayers in this moment of silence. Strengthen us by your spirit. Guide us, O Christ. Creator, make us new. Help us to listen with wisdom and joy according to what you are doing in our lives. 
behold, you are doing a good thing. In the unity of our faith and our diversity of our experiences in life, we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, gathering each one of us across the world. Of our loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. People of God, God is alive. The resurrection is palpable in our lives. So we thank you for your offerings. We thank you for your giving. We thank you for your pledges that allow us to honor our commitments and our ministry together. Jason, you can go ahead and put up the giving slide if you would like. Thank you. You're able to give right now with the QR code. Again, you're able to just put up your phone and it will take you right to the giving page or you can send your offerings in to 300 East College Avenue. Our office is open and Jeff and I are there and we are making sure that our treasurer and everybody is receiving the correct uh, mail. We, it feels good to be back. Uh, our special offering for the month of May is out of the cold. Uh, and we are so privileged to be able, one church out of many, to be able to support our homeless friends in our community. Together, let us rejoice and sing in our doxology that Mark will lead us in. Just go ahead and lead, Mark. I'm not sure there's a slide. <laughs> okay. from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Friends, after our closing hymn, there will be a beautiful postlude that Mark has prepared for us. I invite you to stay for virtual coffee hour and socialize with your friends or wherever you head to next. Um, please know we are so glad that you chose to be here this morning and worship. And we pray that this worship has fueled your soul to bring love and grace and mercy to this world. Let us lift up our voices together and sing our closing blessing. Go my children with my blessing. Go my children with my blessing. Sleeping, I am with you, you are my own. In my love's baptismal river, I have made you mine forever. Go, my children, with my blessing, you are my own. <coughs> On my children, fed and nourished closer to me. Grow in love and love in serving, joyful and free. Hear my Spirit's power fill you, here with tender comfort still you. Oh, my children, fed and nourished, joyful and free. Fun fact, this is the hymn I sing when I'm out in the garden, except instead of saying, go my children, I say, grow my little plants. So this is my, this is my gardening hymn. 
Yes, I am that much of a church nerd. So it goes. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. People of God, receive this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May God look to you and give you peace. Go this week knowing how much Jesus loves you. Share that love with the world around you. Go in peace or stay for virtual coffee hour. Your love, Faith Church. Can't wait to see you next Sunday. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Marinda. Again, thank you. Go in peace, church. We'll see you soon in coffee hour. Peace be with you.